You have probably seen this website making waves online. It didn't just win site of the day, it went on to claim site of the month and even site of the year as well. On our channel, we have already explored some standout features from this masterpiece like the smooth loading experience and those scroll animated floating cards. But today, I want to dive into something even more fascinating, the contact section, this incredible particle animation. You can see the particles flow and react so smoothly to mouse movement, giving it that mesmerizing fluid simulation effect. I know this kind of experience likely comes from a team of brilliant minds who are great at a stack like 3JS or WebGL, but here is the thing, I'm just one person, so I took a different route and turned to P5JS to recreate a simplified version of this animation. After about 10 hours of playing around, I finally managed to build a basic version using HTML, CSS and P5JS. While it's not an exact replica of the original, I think it's a solid start. And with some tweaks, it could get even closer. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add this particle animation to your own website. Trust me, this was a challenge and I'm pretty sure you won't find anyone else covering this anywhere else. So if you are enjoying my work, drop a like on this video, it really helps. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to hit that button. Also, if you want to access the source code for such projects along with full website templates, check out the pro membership. There is a Black Friday sale happening right now, so you can get 50% of your first billing period. The link is in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. We'll keep the HTML minimal since the focus is on the animation. To avoid an empty looking page, I've added a simple header section with a bit of content. It includes a paragraph for placeholder text, an H1 for the main heading, and a button to tie it all together. While these elements aren't essential for the animation, they help mimic the look and feel of the original website and give us a base to build on. That's it for the HTML, let's move on to styling. First, we'll reset the default browser styles. This includes removing margins and padding from all elements and setting the box sizing to border box. Next, for the body, we'll make it take up the entire viewport and give it a bold blue background color. To center everything perfectly, we'll use Flexbox to align the content both horizontally and vertically. Now for the header, we'll position it in the center of the screen and use a transform technique to make sure it's perfectly centered and aligned. The header will be a flexed container so that the elements inside it, the text and the button stack neatly on top of each other. I've also disabled text selection just so it doesn't interfere with the mouse move animation. For the paragraph, we'll style it with uppercase letters and a clean white color with some spacing to separate it from the heading below. The main heading, the H1, will have a bold, responsive font size. Finally, for the button, we'll go for a modern look with no borders around its shape and uppercase text with some more basic styles. With this setup, the page looks clean, centered and ready for the interactive animation. Before diving into the project, I should mention that I have worked on some basic physics related projects in the past using Matter.js and P5.js. You can check those out on the channel if you are interested. These gave me a starting point for understanding some of the concepts but for this project, I needed a bit of extra help with some more complex math involved. That's where ChatGPT came in handy for figuring out some of the intricate calculations and interactions. That said, in this video, I'll walk you through the core logic step by step. I'll explain what each part of the code does so you will have a solid understanding of the basics. And if you want to dive deeper into the math and physics behind it, feel free to use any AI tools or resources to explore further. We start by defining some initial variables and constants. These include an array to store the particles, the total number of particles, their size, and the spacing between them. We also set up values for gravity, the frame's delta time, and variables to track the mouse's previous position for interactions. Next, we have the particle class. This is the core of the animation and handles the behavior and properties of each individual particle. First, we have a constructor. This is where we define the initial properties of each particle when it's created. It defines the position, velocity, and acceleration, giving the particle its initial motion. We also set its color to white and store its previous position for smoother transitions. Each particle gets a random rotation and a shape, triangle, square, or circle to add a variety and dynamic movement. 
The density factor starting at zero will come into play later when particles interact. This setup ensures every particle is unique with its own motion and visual characteristics. Let's move on to how these particles update. The update method handles the particle's movement and interaction with external forces. First, it stores the current position as the last pose, which is used later for smoother rendering. Then, we update the particle's rotation by adding the rotational velocity scaled by delta time. Next, we apply gravity. The gravity effect is scaled based on the particle's density factor, which helps simulate varying weights of the particles. If the mouse is pressed, we calculate the distance between the particle and the cursor. If the particle is within a set range, we factor in the mouse's velocity and apply a force towards the particle, making it respond dynamically to the mouse movement. The closer the particle is, the stronger the interaction, which also impacts the rotation. This keeps the particles feeling responsive and dynamic, especially during mouse interactions. Let's move on to how damping and boundaries are handled. We calculate the damping factor, which controls how much the particle's velocity slows down. This factor is based on the particle's density factor, allowing heavier particles to behave differently. The acceleration is then applied to the velocity, scaled by delta time for smooth motion. We add damping to reduce the particle's speed over time, creating a more natural effect. If the particle is near the bottom of the canvas, we apply additional damping to mimic friction or resistance when touching the ground. The particle's position is updated by adding an adjusted velocity, ensuring the movement feels dynamic and continuous. To handle boundaries, we apply a bounce effect. If a particle moves beyond the edge of the canvas, it's repositioned within bounds and its velocity is reversed and reduced to simulate energy loss. This ensures the particles stay contained within the viewport while maintaining a realistic motion. Finally, we reset the acceleration and density factor to prepare the particle for the next frame. With this, the particles now move naturally, slow down over time, and interact with boundaries seamlessly. Let's move on to the rendering process. The draw method is responsible for rendering each particle on the canvas. We start by setting the particle's color and ensuring no outlines are applied. To make the movement smoother, we use linear interpolation between the last position and the current position. This helps blend the motion for a more polished effect. Next, we prepare the canvas for drawing by pushing a new transformation state. The particle is moved to its interpolated position and rotated based on its current rotation value. The size of the particle is set and its shape is determined using a switch statement. Depending on its assign type, the particle is drawn as a triangle, square or circle. After rendering, we restore the canvas state using pop, ensuring the transformations don't affect other elements. This method ensures each particle is displayed accurately and dynamically, adapting to its position, rotation and shape. Now let's move on to how particles interact with each other. The interact method is where the magic of particle interactions happens. It calculates how each particle behaves when it comes close to another. First, we calculate the distance between two particles. If the distance is smaller than the defined spacing, the particles begin to interact. Their density factor is increased based on how close they are, simulating the effect of particles becoming denser when packed together. Next, we calculate the force between the particles. This force pushes them away from each other and is scaled by their proximity, with closer particles experiencing a stronger push. This creates the natural looking movement of the particles, dispersing and shifting around. If the particles overlap, we correct their positions to reduce the overlap. The correction strength depends on the overlap amount and we also factor in boundaries, reducing the force if particles are near the bottom of the canvas to simulate a grounding effect. The method also balances their velocities by blending their movements, creating a smooth flow instead of abrupt shifts. If the particles are extremely close, this blending effect becomes stronger to avoid jittery motion. Finally, a small acceleration force is applied to each particle to enhance the interaction and create a fluid dynamic effect.
This entire method is key to creating the smooth, natural interactions that make the animation feel alive. In the setup function, we initialize the canvas and prepare the environment for the animation. First, we create a canvas that spans the entire browser window and set the frame rate to 60 for smooth animation. Gravity is defined as a downward factor to simulate the particles falling naturally. The background color is set to a bold blue to match the visual aesthetic. Next, we calculate how many columns of particles can fit within 95% of the canvas width. From this, we determine the number of rows required to accommodate all the particles. The starting X and Y positions are calculated to center the particle grid on the canvas. We then use a while loop to create all the particles. Inside the loop, we position each particle in a grid layout with some rendered jitter added to their X and Y coordinates. The slight randomness prevents the particles from looking too uniform, giving the grid a more natural feel. As each particle is created, it's added to the particles array. By the end of this function, all the particles are initialized and ready for interaction in the animation. Let's now look at how they are updated and rendered in the main animation loop. The draw function is the heart of the animation where the particles are updated, rendered and their interactions calculated on every frame. We start by redrawing the background with a solid blue color to reset the canvas for the next frame. Then we calculate the delta time based on the current frame rate to ensure smooth and consistent motion regardless of system performance. Next, we create a grid system to optimize how particles interactions are handled. Each particle is assigned to a cell in this grid based on its position. This special partitioning reduces the number of checks needed for interactions as particles only interact with others in same or neighboring cells. Once the grid is built, we loop through the cells and check for neighboring cells within a small range. For every particle pair in these cells, we calculate their interactions using the interact method. This approach keeps the animation efficient even with hundreds of particles. After handling interactions, we loop through all particles to render them on the canvas. Each particle is drawn based on its current position, rotation and shape, bringing the animation to life. Finally, we update the mouse's previous position, ensuring accurate tracking for mouse-based interactions. There is also a window resized function to ensure the canvas adjusts dynamically when the browser window is resized, keeping the animation responsive. With this setup, the animation continuously updates and renders smoothly, giving us that fluid, dynamic particle effect. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.